This video will discuss the activity of electrolytes in solution. An electrolyte is defined as a substance that ionizes when you dissolve it in solution. So ionizing meaning it's going to separate into oppositely charged particles. So because of Coulomb's law, these charged particles are going to have very strong interactions and thus they're usually going to be non-ideal at even very low mole fractions. So the types of equations for what uh, the activities are of solutes are not going to work for these and we're going to have to describe some different nomenclature in order to uh, look at the activity of electrolytes in solution. Okay, so let's say we have some electrolyte here. We have x nu plus and y nu minus, which is a solid. So x would be maybe some type of metal, y maybe some type of halide or other salt anion. So they start off as a salt, which is a solid. Uh, there's nu plus of the of the cation and nu minus of the of the anion. There are stoichiometric coefficients there. So when they dissolve, there are nu plus cations of the X in aqueous solution, if this is water, plus nu minus uh, Y anions in aqueous solution. The charge of the cation is going to be nu minus to the uh, nu minus plus times some integer. The charge of the anion is going to be nu plus minus times some integer, such that the total charge of this ion is going to be zero whenever it is associated with one another. So they associate when they are out of solution and they dissociate when they are in solution. Okay, so our expressions have shown thus far that for an, a solute, the chemical potential of that solute is equal to the standard chemical potential of that solute. So usually it uh, under whatever standard state chemical potential we define. Usually for solutes that's Henry's law. Plus the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the activity of our solute. So this is going to be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient nu plus times the chemical potential of the cation plus the stoichiometric coefficient nu minus times the chemical potential of our anion. So our, ca our cation and our anion each have their own chemical potential and um, they're going to be related there to the number of uh, ions of each of them. All right, uh, the chemical potential of the cation equals its standard chemical potential plus RT log of its activity. And for the anion as well, it, its chemical potential equals its standard chemical potential plus RT times the natural log of the activity of the anion. So the natural log of the activity of our solute uh, electrolyte here is equal to nu plus times the natural log of the activity of the cation plus nu minus times the natural log of the activity of the anion. So our activity of our electrolyte is equal to the activity of the cation to the power nu plus times the activity of our cation or our anion times to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. This is also going to be equal to what's defined as the mean ionic activity a plus minus to the power nu. So nu is the total stoichiometric coefficient that's nu plus plus nu minus. So for example in sodium chloride NaCl this would be 1 and 1 so nu, nu would be 1 plus 1 or 2. Something like Oh, let's see, uh, what would be something where they are different? Blanking on that at the moment. Not one of my best moments. Okay, but anything where you had a, a 1 here and a 2 there, then the total would be 3, just whatever the sum of those coefficients are. Okay, so the activity of the cation then is equal to its molality times its activity coefficient and for the anion its activity is equal to the molality of the anion times its activity coefficient. M sub i is the molarity of species i. Gamma sub i is the activity coefficient of species i. Let's add a sub i down there. Okay, so the activity for the solute, as I said, is going to be equal to 
the mean ionic activity to the power of nu, the total stoichiometric coefficient, which is going to be equal to, well, each of these activities is their activity coefficient times their molality. So it's going to be m plus to the nu plus times m minus to the nu minus times gamma plus to the nu plus times gamma minus to the nu minus. We can define a quantity called the mean ionic molality, which is equal to this quantity here, uh, the molality of the cation to its stoichiometric coefficient power times the molality of the anion to the power nu minus. And we also define a quantity called the mean ionic activity coefficient, where gamma plus minus to the nu equals gamma plus to the nu plus, the activity coefficient of the cation, times gamma minus to the nu minus, the activity coefficient of the anion. All right, so whenever we go through the same kind of derivation that we had for non-volatile uh, solutes, we get, this, we get that the osmotic coefficient from uh, that video on non-volatile activity is going to be the negative natural log of the activity of the solvent divided by the new part here is that we have this total uh, stoichiometric coefficient in there times the molality of the sol times the molality of the solute our electrolyte times the molar mass of the solvent so we can get the natural log of our mean ionic activity coefficient just the same way as we did for the natural log of the activity coefficient of other non-volatile solutes using this new definition for the osmotic coefficient integrated from zero up to that molality. So the total result here and the punchline ends up being that colligative properties for electrolytes work in very much the same way as they do for non-electrolytes except that now there's an extra factor in all of these properties. So the freezing point depression for an electrolyte is negative nu times the depression constant times the molality of our electrolyte. So minus nu KFM2. The boiling point elevation is that coefficient times the standard boiling point elevation KBM2. And the osmotic pressure is nu times the standard osmotic pressure, molarity of the solvent, times the gas constant, times the temperature.